Hello, my name is Micah Schlein and I'll be presenting our work on a system for performing syntactic-based queries at interactive speeds without explicitly specifying syntax. This was done at AA2 Israel together with Hillel Taub Tabib, Shoval Sadeh and Yoav Goldberg. This is part of a larger effort we are working on at AA2 Israel, so stay tuned for more. We present a query language for querying over syntactic trees. The novelty in our language is that it does not require syntactic expertise and allows for fast exploration of large data sets. So why do we even need such a language? Syntactic parsers are very accurate these days thanks to deep learning. Using syntactic structure for information retrieval can be useful for linguists and it's also very convenient for some relation extraction tests. However, writing patterns over graph is just hard. So it would be useful to alleviate some of this complexity. Let's quickly talk about existing languages, languages that already do this. There's Odin, a YAML-based language where you can define token and dependency rules. There's SASPAC, NLP toolkit has a language where you define a JSON graph structure to be matched in sentences. Sendrex interleaves node and edge constraints to define a syntactic path you want to find. DepSearch provides a similar syntax to Sendrex, but is even more succinct. PropMiner in spirit is the closest to our implementation because it starts with an example sentence. The sentence is then converted into an SRQL query, but after this initial translation, the user keeps working with SRQL. All of these languages have different levels of verboseness, but the main thing is that they all require knowledge about the syntactic representation, which needs to be encoded into the query. This places a lot of effort on the users of such query languages, severely limiting their application. We present a radically simpler yet expressive query language that is based on example sentences with light markup that can work at interactive speeds. We'll demonstrate the system over Wikipedia, but we use the same engine for bi biomedical corpora as well. So let's demonstrate our language. Let's start with a simple example to show the syntax of our query language. Let's say I'm looking for a control predicate that has an object. I may not know how exactly this is expressed in the syntax tree and may not even know the linguistic terms like predicate, control, and object, but I do know how it looks like in a sentence. So let's start with that. John wanted to go home. Next, we need to mark the parts of the sentence we are actually interested in. So let's say we're interested in the structure of wanted, go, and home. We mark these words for capture by prepending a name followed by a colon. You can think of captures as variables to be filled by the match engine. And that's it. This is already a valid query in our syntax. So let's see what happens when we run it. We now see this graph, which represents the structure of our query. Each marked word corresponds to a node in the graph. We see the names we supplied on each node. The edges represent the syntactic structure between the nodes. Here, an XCOMP edge between the wanted and go nodes, and a DOG edge between the go and the home nodes. Finally, we see that the nodes are marked with anything. This means that any token can match this node, and we will soon see how we can restrict these. If we look at the match sentences, we can see that indeed the words that matched are not the same as in our example sentence. However, all match sentences adhere to the syntactic structure. Also, if you haven't noticed, we managed to get the results rather quickly, even though the query was over the entire Wikipedia corpus. This is thanks to our underlying indexing engine. If we don't want to think of names for captures, we can omit the names and just leave the colon. And if we run the query now, we can see that the names for the captures have been taken from the words in the example sentence. Now let's add some restrictions. Suppose we want the word home to match exactly and the word corresponding to go to be a verb. We can add node constraints by writing them in square brackets between the column and the word.
we allow constraints over tags, lemmas, entities, or words. Let's run this query. First of all, we can now see that the constraints were added to the graph representation, while the wanted node still remains with the anything constraint. All the matches now contain the word home in the relevant capture. Another thing we can do is omit the value of the constraint and it will be taken from the sentence. So we can shorten our query like this. To make it even shorter, we can use aliases for the constraint keys by simply using the first character of the key. So instead of tag, we can just write T. And instead of word, we can just use W. The final query will match the same results, but is much simpler and faster to write. An important aspect of the system is that you get initial results very quickly. This allows for fast iterative exploration while gradually refining your query. Let's see the system in a relation extraction scenario. Let's say we're interested in people who obtain degrees from higher education institutions. We can start with the sentence, John received his degree from Harvard. We require an exact match for degree, so we'll make it a capture with the word constraint, but we'll leave Harvard and John as open captures. Let's run it. As we can see in the graph representation, a node for received was added even though we did not mark it for capture. The system added it to make the graph connected. For now, we will leave it unconstrained. If that will become an issue down the line, we can add some constraints. If we look at the results, we can see a problem. The system captured years in the institution variable. Looking at the graph, we can see that there is no node for the word from, so let's add it. We can make from a capture with a word constraint, but instead we will write dollar $from. Dollar sign indicates an anchor. It specifies constraints that need to be added to the graph, but not captured as variables. We now see the new node in the graph representation with the constraint that the word must be exactly from. The results also look much better. We now capture the main words of people and school names. However, most words match for the subject variables are pronouns and not actual names. To fix that, we add a constraint to the subject, asking for the same identity type as the word John. We will see that the node will get restricted to the person entity type. Now we see proper names in the results. Let's address the problem that we're only capturing a single word for every capture. Both people names and the names of institutions are often multi-word expressions, so the values we capture aren't very useful. To cover the full names, we add a di diamond symbol before the capture. This will expand the captures to entity boundaries. Other expansion strategies are available, but we will not cover them. The results now look really good. We see nice pairs of people and corresponding institutions. However, the query we've made might be a bit too restricted, as there are other words that can be used besides degree to indicate the relation we are looking for. The nice thing is that we can modify the query slightly and explore what other values are possible in that position. Let's fixate the word Harvard and relax the constraint on degree. We can now look at the words captured by the degree variable and we can find other useful variations. Let's add some of these variations back into our query. So W can be SJD, Bachelor, bachelor Doctorate, Master, MBA, 
remove the constraint for Howard again, and let's run this again. As you can see, the ability to quickly constrain some parts of the query and relax others can be used as a powerful exploration technique in our systems. We can repeat the same process for the word received, but we'll skip it for this demonstration. Now that we got a decent query and results we are happy with, we might want to export the results for further processing. For that, we can simply click the download TSV button. The TSV file we get looks like this. The file contains several columns, but the important part is that we get the full captures as columns. So the captured values are really easy to access for further processing. This concludes our demonstration. You can learn more about our system in the paper. And if you found this interesting, you may want to check out additional related work that we present at this event. We presented a simple yet expressive query language, which is based on example sentences with simple markup. To use our language, you don't need to be an expert in syntax and can explore the data very quickly because of our underlying indexing engine. You can try it out at lnai.github.io spike. Thank you for listening.